on the agenda and are detailed in the budget book, which has been uploaded to SharePoint. The Chief Financial Officer will introduce these financial items. It is necessary to consider these together. Therefore, I would propose that the committee consider each report in turn and then come back to the recommendations of item 4A, which is the budget on council tax 2022-23 report. I am ruling items 3, 4D and 4F2 budget book and marine fuel as urgent to allow the matters to be considered prior to the next meeting. Item 1, members are asked to declare any interest that they have in any items on the agenda. Do we have any declarations? Don't see any lights or hands. Um, it would be helpful if members express an interest why they're declaring an interest in item concern, so you can do that if that arises during the, the course of the meeting. Item two, <laughs> King Charles III coronation. This report reviews options around leave arrangements for King Charles III's coronation. A range of potential options are outlined in Appendix 1, and these options have been shared with trade unions, and their feedback is detailed at Appendix 2 to the report. Members are asked to determine whether to grant leave to mark the coronation, and if so, to identify financial provision. I'll ask the Chief Executive to come in. Thank you, Chair. This this report comes before you because um, it's the matter in question is an additional day's leave or an additional public holiday. But the, the background to this, as members are aware, uh, is that we discussed the matter in full at the Budget Board and um, there was either agreement or consent, I would say, to the proposal that uh, there be no public holiday and no additional annual leave. And accordingly, uh, Mr. MacDonald and I removed uh, any potential allocation from the budgets. So the financial Im implications at 4.1, if you are minded to change that view, uh, are significant because no budgetary provision has been made for any of these options and provision would have to be made from either savings within existing service bud budgets or by reducing our uncommitted reserves further. Uh, I would recommend neither of these courses of action, I'm afraid. Um, it is fortunate, I think, that the coronation itself takes place on Saturday the 6th of May and the proposed public holiday uh, that's proposed by UK government and it's, it's a local decision uh, would not take place until Monday 8th of May. So there's no impediment, as it were, to those who wish to uh, participate in the coronation from doing so other than those who would be required to work uh, in any case. So the options are set out at Appendix 1. Option 1, which is uh, the one I'm recommending to you, is that we do not recognise uh, a public holiday or allocate uh, any additional leave um, for members' information. As part of the pay settlement for this year, an additional day's annual leave uh, has already been granted for this year. So. There is an additional day's leave anyway. Um, the implications, some authorities uh, will grant the holiday or another annual leave day, others will not. Uh, and that's that's been the position. Some authorities have said no holiday, uh, others have approved a holiday. Uh, the options are set out. Um, I wouldn't recommend two, which is move another public holiday because that requires further consultation. And the other options have the costs which are indicated uh, in, in the third column there. Um, I'm afraid I don't think we're in a position to be incurring additional discretionary costs in the light of the budget information uh, before you today. Uh, we did, of course, consult our trade unions and they are in favour, of course, of either the allocation of a full public holiday or another annual leave day. Uh, and you want to take that into account, but, uh, but um, the recommendation follows a discussion at the budget board, and that is that no additional leave should be granted to mark the coronation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Members, any questions or comments? So agreed with the option, was it option one or option two? Option one, yeah. So the, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, item three, third quarter revenue monitoring 23-24. This report is for noting and details the Collier's forecast revenue outturn for 22-23. A summary of the financial performance to the end of December 2022 was attached at Appendix A to the report. Departments are currently projected to be within carry-forward tolerances at the end of the year, and an exception report on budgetary performance is included at Appendix C to the report. The unaudited accounts for 21-22 show that the Collier held, held balances of 4 million earmarked for the forward strategy over and above its current policy of holding three and a half million in reserves. 
The second quarter report recommended that the current year additional pay and inflationary costs be met from reserves in the first instance. These costs have been offset to a degree by savings on loan charges, additional council tax income and pay deductions due to industrial action by teachers, leaving a balance of 2.2 million to support the future budgets, 1.1 million of which is already committed to 23-24. Norman Macdonald will answer in any questions from members on this. Are there any questions or comments? No. Well, weather's fairly picked up. Um, so this report's for noting. Agreed. Thank you. Item four, uh, budget and council tax setting 23-24. Item 1A of the budget folder. This report details the budget and council tax setting for 23-24 and a forward strategy. Please note that in relation to recommendation G, the relevant section for Kurumus launch in the Netherlands share is as detailed at section 10 of the report. I'll ask the Chief Executive and Chief Financial Officer to introduce the report and answer any questions. Thank you, Chair. I'll be very brief uh, because you, you've heard my my, my um, introduction at the first of the service committees this morning, and this is Policy and Resources Committee sitting as a service committee. Uh, I don't have anything to add to what I've already said and to the, the points set out in the report. I, I'm, of course, happy to take questions on the service plan for Chief Executive's Department, as is Mr McKeever, uh, who's present, and Mr McKinnon in respect of investment delivery. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments? No lights and hands. OK, we'll move on to B. Item 1B of the budget folder. This report seeks approval of the service business plans 23-24. Insofar as this committee's interests are concerned, the chief executive's business plans are at item 1B, A, B, C, D and E. The deputy chief executive business plan are at item F. The assets and infrastructure business plans are at item G and the economic development and planning business plans are at items H and I as part of the budget folder. And again, the chief executive, deputy chief executive and chief financial officer will answer any questions of detail. Do we have any questions? No, OK, thank you. We'll move on to the next one. That's risk register. Item 1C of the budget folder. This report seeks approval of the strategic and operational risk registers for 23-24. Insofar as the, this committee's interests are concerned, the relevant risk registers are at item 1C, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H and I as part of the budget folder. And again, Chief Executive, Deputy Chief Executive and Chief Financial Officer will answer any questions of detail. No lights or hands, thank you. We'll move on to the next one. And business continuity plans 23-24. This report seeks approval of the business continuity plans 23-24 insofar as this committee is concerned. The plans, business continuity plans relevant to this committee are at items 1D, A to O as part of the budget folder. And again, if there are any questions from members, they can be answered. I see no lights or hands, so we'll move on to E. Item 1E of the budget folder, approval of sort of the draft budget book 22-23. Insofar as this committee is concerned, please refer to item 1E, Chief Executive's Department Business Plans at pages 4 to 9, Deputy Chief Executive's Business Plans at pages 10 to 25, Strategic Finance, finance Business Plans at pages 36 to 39, Investment Delivery Business Plans at pages 40 to 41, and Health and Social Care Business Plans at pages 43. As part of the budget book. Again, Chief Executive, Deputy Chief Executive and Chief Financial Officer are available to answer any questions. I see no lights or hands, so in that case we'll move on to F. Uh, insofar as this committee's interests are concerned, items 1F, A, B and C on the budget folder are for noting. Having considered these items, can we go back to the main report at item 4A? No lights, OK. So to conclude the budget items and for the purpose of recording the minute with reference to items 4B, C, D, E and F, can I now confirm insofar as the committee's interests are concerned, approval of item 4A, item 1A of the budget papers, budget and council tax setting 23-24. No lights around, so I'll take that as agreement. Thank you very much. The next scheduled meeting of the committee will be on 26th of April 2023. Thank you for your time and attendance.